So my very special guest is Lady Hawk. How are you? I'm good, thanks. It's really good to see you. Cheers. Oh, thanks for having me. And I've listened to your album, your new album, Wild Things, and cool. I really love it. It's oh, really instant. Thank you. Was it a fun album to make? Because I presume that the, after following the last one, because the last one was a, a bit darker than mm. this album, because this is obviously more feel good. Yeah. Uh, was it a fun process? Yeah, it was. It was, a, um, it was a really fun process when I finally got there. Yeah, it was a rewarding experience, I think. Um, I found the right person to collaborate with as well, and that was a chance meeting, so all the pieces just sort of fell together. And I know that you want to create music that puts a smile on people's faces. Yeah, I, I mean, I've definitely, I know when I when I listened to it, I know I was in a good headspace when I made it, and I, that's so important to me this time around. I was just like, I'm sick of, you know, feeling dark. I need to yeah. feel better so I can make a good record, you know, happy it, record. It can really work, though, with dark lyrics, because I know that Dubstar, particularly in the 90s, they were really good at that. They were good at mixing that kind of darkness and light yeah it was like a real juxtaposition I think that's that's great when that happens in pop yeah yeah and I sort of always have done that in the past and um, I think this time around I was a bit like I actually really want to feel happy and make a happy album because <laughs> I know that you, you quit drink I and did you yeah started because I know that you're not a gym goer but you were walking more <laughs> yeah I'm pretty useless but um yeah I started to go for walks just really like take care of what I was eating and you know putting in my body because it yeah. was um yeah, just bad for a while there. I know what you mean. You just need to knock back on the stuff that's bad for you and just do more yeah, more healthy stuff to make you feel better, especially if you're a musician, I guess, because you've got to feel good about making music. Yeah, and you've got to feel good about yourself in general. I just, oh, I've realised this anyway. Like, it just makes such a difference in, you know, you, the way that people even read you and see you, they can tell, they can see there's a difference, you know? Yeah. So, so all my friends and family have noticed a difference and it just it sort of came out in the music as well. And, yeah. There's a song on the album I love, and that's a love song, which is the new single. A uh, great video for that, where there's a character scene at the beginning that goes into a video shop, puts the video in, and you're on the TV screen singing yeah. the song. And it's such a brilliant flashback to the 80s, which is obviously a, a time when electronic music and pop music was really vibrant. Yeah. And it kind of has that feel, that 80s feel, especially in the video shop as well. It's got that kind of nostalgic nod. Yeah, yeah. Back to that decade. Is that a, a favourite time of yours musically? The um, 80s? Yeah, I mean... 80s and 90s were pretty massive for me and um, it just so happened that the, the the directors that made that video are obsessed with that per- that period of time as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, so they were really keen to do something um, sort of 80s, 90s and um, yeah, like loads. They got some uh, a guy in Birmingham, he had a massive VHS collection so they rented it off him and he had everything, like everything you can think of like from the 90s and 80s, like all old horrors and sort of B-grade movies. He had everything there. It was it was really cool actually looking through them all. In yeah. London and Croydon, you, you ended up there. How did you end up in Croydon? They just found the perfect spot. It was a, a shop that, um, it's a, it's, it was a gaming store, so it had loads of different sort of video games and stuff, but it, basically all they needed to do was clear it out and then all the shelves were there to put all the, the VHSs on. Yeah. Um, so they just decorated it from scratch to make it look like an 80s video store. Oh, fantastic. I- I'm curious about you as-, as a person that's not necessarily extrovert being on stage, because I think it's just assumed that if you're a musician or a performer that you feel comfortable in that spotlight, yeah. but a lot of people don't. Um, is it something that you struggle with on stage to-, to be kind of in front of everybody or do you just get in your own moment? Um, yeah, I've struggled massively with that over the years. Um, I find it really hard walking onto stage. Um, it's sort of always been a bit 50-50 for me. Like I love being able to play the songs for the people that have come to see me, but going out onto stage is actually, uh, I, it's traumatic sometimes. Yeah. Like I get so wound up and nervous and I sometimes get so nervous I forget the lyrics or I forget how to play my guitar. It's really weird, my mind goes blank. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty, I, yeah, I torture myself a little bit with playing live. Is it something that gets easier though, uh, the more that you're on stage? Like say for the first half an hour it's pretty tricky, but once you get comfortable with it, it's, it's something that you love and you, you get a real buzz from. I think it's more like after I've done a few shows it starts to get a bit better. Like usually I find the first couple of shows I'm looking at the set list wishing it would end. Uh, and then sort of halfway through a tour is when I start to really hit my stride and I'm like, oh, it's it's all just muscle memory now. Like, so the first I, part of the tour is the trickiest. Yeah, I find it really hard, first half of a tour. Um, yeah. 
Sweet Fascination, one of the tracks on the album, uh, it's about people being obsessed by other people, whether that's, mm. you know, if you're in a relationship or just the people that are obsessed by celebrity. Are you a people watcher? Could oh you yeah. Sit and watch people for hours. Yes, yeah. I am. Yeah, I'm also a curtain twitcher. Like oh. I look out my window with, you know, peer out to see who's walking past my I'm so terrible. I'm like yeah, um I love people watching. It's one of my favorite things. And I guess cuz you live in LA as well, that's yeah. the perfect place to net curtain twitch or if, I know. if you've got the curtains pulled back yeah you can see what's going on over there yeah it is a good place for people watching actually how, how are you finding it there because i know that you you recently married is it was it january last year you got married yeah so yeah 2015 is yeah. that something that that you've been affected by as well with the whole gay, gay marriage thing especially in parts of the states um where you can't get married if you're same in a same-sex relationship but uh, have friends of yours been affected by that people that you know that can't get married because of where they live or? yeah yeah, people, my friends in Australia, because um, the law hasn't been passed there, um, and I know that that's, you know, there's a massive gay community in Australia, especially yeah. Sydney, you know, um, it's just shocking, you know. Mardi Gras, hello. I know, it's so fun. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I don't know what the, up, I don't know the latest news on that, so I, I can't be like 100% certain, but I'm pretty certain it's not It's just it's insane that you can't get married. <laughs> Now in 2016, I know because of where you are, or it's just it's just blows my mind. It just makes me feel sad. Like, yeah, I'm lucky, I think. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of friends of mine, a lot of male friends of mine, um, gay men that would be very jealous of you because you work with Baby Daddy. Oh, yeah, yeah, from Scissor Sisters, yeah, Scott, uh, yeah, Scott, yeah. H- how was that? Because I know that he he comes <laughs> across as you know, I, I don't know him, but he comes across as a very lovely guy in interviews, yeah. And, is he quite a shy guy as well? Does he not like the spotlight yeah, he, necessarily? Yeah, but he's hilarious. He's got such a good sense of humour. Um, yeah, he doesn't like the spot. He's we're, we bonded over that actually. He gets the anxiety and he sort of, uh, you know, he doesn't like it so much. But um, no, he's a really funny guy. He was yeah. fun to work with. Yeah, and you're a Scissor Sisters fan as well. Yeah, I love them. I love. I remember the first time I met them. I was just like really starstruck and yeah, struck up a fin- friendship with Scott. Do you have a, a good relationship with your fans as well? I noticed on your, fa- I think it was on your Facebook page uh, last couple of days, somebody asked you if you could tour again in the UK because he was on holiday at the time of your tour. <laughs> I mean, it might have been a, a joke. It's probably a joke, but I'm just wondering yeah. what sort of fans you have, whether they're quite demanding or if they've got a good sense of humour. Generally, uh, are you in touch with them one to one? Um, I in person, like if at a show, I meet people. I'd, I'll always have a chat. Um, I find the online stuff really difficult. Um, it's it's basically an open forum for people to say whatever they want, and so I avoid it completely. I don't yeah. go on my Facebook at yeah. all um, because for every nice comment, there's there's something vicious. People send you you know horrible messages, yeah. or you know I had, I had quite a bit of abuse because uh, I, w- I wasn't going to someone's town or someone's ci- city because I'm not going to as many places as I, as I normally would. Uh, on this tour and I had someone really go into town on me on that and I'm like I can't actually help that like it's I'm sorry I, I don't be mean you know I guess social media <laughs> it gives people a platform doesn't it exactly to, to talk to you one one on one and yeah. it's and, and if you just have one negative comment out of the hundreds of great ones you're going to focus on the bad one yeah what's well, so it just hurts your feelings I think yeah. they forget there's a human being behind all of it you know there's someone a person there that reads something nasty and then their feelings are hurt you know you know i I just think there's this like there used to be the schoolyard bully who would bully you to your face and then see you cry and run away or whatever now it's like spineless bullying you know it's great you avoid it though because I think there could be a tendency to be quite curious about what's on there yeah and if you just stay clear of it you're not going to get hurt I stay clear of it and I don't engage it because that gives it life and I don't want to breathe life into that nasty beast yeah (laughs) good for you Uh, what do you think about awards ceremonies as well because I know that you were nominated for best breakthrough artist at the Brits was that six years ago now 2010. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think about all that? Is it is it something that that is close to your heart? I mean, the same with chart success. Is it something that's important to you as an artist? Um, it's it's really the chart success. I I don't think I've ever really had any of that anyway. So um, I just uh, I like I like the award the award thing is fun because I like the the fact that someone has recognised me for the work I've done. I think that's amazing. Um, 
but it's not something I lose sleep over. I just um, I just want as many people to hear my music as possible, and yeah. I want them to get something positive out of it. That's the most important thing. Yeah, if people yeah. People are loving what you're doing. Yeah, fans are loving what exactly. You're doing. And I want to be able to keep doing this. You know, yeah. I want to um, be able to keep making music and touring. Yeah, I know that you're a massive fan of David Bowie. Um, yeah. Hunky Dory, I think, is your favourite album. It is. Yeah. Uh, where were you when you found out he died? Because it was just terrible news. I mean, it was really shocking. Yeah, I was at a, a friend's house for dinner in Auckland, and um. My friend, my friends had. Um, there was about ten of us all sitting around a big table. My friends had toiled over this lovely dinner, um, and they put it down on the table. And then um, my friend Jimmy just went really quiet, and he was looking down, and and uh, his girlfriend was like, "What's wrong?" He was like, I, I, "I think Bowie's died." All of us were massive Bowie fans. Yeah. I just I cried. I've never had that reaction to anyone dying before, but I bawled my eyes out. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it because. For some reason, I always thought I would meet him. I just always, he always was so special to me throughout my life. And I I just always thought, you know, maybe one day the stars will align and I'll get to meet Bowie, you know. I could be walking down the street in New York and bump into him, you know, because I heard he wa- he would walk around in his, like, you know, trousers, his, like, yeah. army pants and a yeah. cap and stuff. And I just always <laughs> thought maybe I'd meet him. I don't know. I was gutted. Yeah, it was as well. My, my boyfriend woke me up and told me, and it was a real shock to the system because I... I think I just thought that he was going to live forever. It's crazy yeah, to think that, but I think he just seemed like this alien creature that yeah. nobody could touch, and nobody could hurt, and it was it was just such a surreal thing to know that he wasn't going to make music anymore. Yeah, it was just like poof, he's gone. Yeah, it was crazy. How are you finding living in LA? Because I know that it's quite a starry place <laughs> in some aspects. It can be quite a, a private place as yeah. well as all the you know, the paps everywhere and stuff, is it can be quite a secluded place. Is, do you enjoy both of those? I know that you're not a f- massive fan of being in the spotlight and the celebrity thing. I just, I'm I'm a very private person and I um, I like that. I just, I stay at my place usually and um, I don't get out much, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Was it um, quite a, a daunting thing at first? Because I, I don't think you were, uh, you had many friends when you first moved there. Yeah, I didn't really know many people. Um, I had a couple of friends who had lived there for a long time, but that was it really. And it was like, really felt quite alien to me. Like I'd been visiting LA for a really long time, um, on and off for years and years and years. And I love, I've always loved it. And the reasons I love it, I think are the reasons people don't like it. Yeah. Like I love the sprawlingness of the city. I love that it's like one giant suburb that goes on forever. Um, I don't know, it's sunny every day. That drives some people mad, but I love it. Um, I love that. Yeah. And people have got a sunny disposition there as well. Yeah. Well, in the States generally, I think, they seem yeah. more, more more positive. Yeah, and I, you know, like, cynical. you go into a, a, a diner or whatever to get your lunch and... I know, the, I know the waitresses and waiters are working for their tips, but I don't care. They, they greet me with a smile, exactly. and that makes such a difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your work with Tiesto as well, because you, uh, you did a track called Last Train. Yep. Um, is collaborations something that you enjoy, the collaboration work? Yeah, I, I don't really do, do them very often, but I really enjoy them. Um, you know, I, li- I like them when they come up. So. And was it... It's quite a strange concept for your fans to embrace as well because I think that there, there seems to be some kind of snobbery sometimes with people that are a pop artist that work in dance and vice versa as well. Mm. I think pop music can be looked down upon, which is just insane because pop is popular, isn't it? It's, yeah. It, it shouldn't be um, something that is, you know, guilty pleasure. I hate that term, but a lot of people think it is a guilty pleasure. I know. I saw someone <laughs> tweet me the other day and was like, at Lady Hawk for you is my guilty pleasure at the moment. Yeah. I was like, ouch. Yeah. Does that mean you're embarrassed and you're hiding me away in a cupboard somewhere? And it's then not you... really a compliment, yeah, really. Not... They're probably thinking it is. but it's... Yeah, I was like, oh, that's a kind of a backhanded compliment. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it, though. <laughs> I just think you should love what you, what, you know, what you listen to. And I think if it's great, you should love it. It's... Yeah. It shouldn't be something to be to be ashamed of, and I just hate the fact that pop music sometimes is is looked down upon for that reason. Yeah, me too. I'm with you on that. Yeah, um, you're on tour, which is very exciting. You're starting in Bristol, and then you're going back home. I say home, New Zealand, obviously, eventually, but you're playing Australia as well. Yep. Do you like touring? Um, I actually do. I, I like getting into the groove of touring. Um, I I stress out obviously playing live, but um. I just like I like the groove of, of touring. It sort of um, keeps me busy, keeps my mind busy. Um, I love seeing all the different cities and um, places, especially in America. It's like you go from one place will be middle of the desert, next minute you're in snow and mountains, yeah. then lakes, then forest. It's 
so it's beautiful. Do you yeah. see the places though? Do you get to see the areas where you're playing? Because I would imagine it's just rehearsals. It's it's usually just in and out, like you get in and you play a show. But um, some of these long drives are pretty beautiful, especially in the states. Um, the drives are huge um, and and pretty amazing looking. Um, yeah, and if we have a day off, we'll, I'll try and do something, you know. I don't know, scenic or something. <laughs> something non-work. Something non-work, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Pip, it's good to see you today. I wish you all the best with the album. It's great. And the tour, too. Yeah, good to see you. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. 